before it's too late. traditional Khmer dance. So old it's recorded in stone on the walls of the famous Angkor Wat, a former ancient capital of this amazing country. The dance is about a group of maidens who find paradise in nature. Nature though is a priority for international agencies here, but not for most Khmer people in their struggle to survive after 30 years of bloody civil war. Alongside the UN-led economic and political reconstruction, wildlife groups have flocked here since the late 1990s, promoting the notion of animal welfare. An alien concept to most of Cambodia's impoverished 13 million people who in their attempt to survive are often more interested in eating animals than conserving them. This region has always been rich in wildlife. Bears, tigers, leopards and many more species used to range across the whole of Southeast Asia. But the loss of habitat, hunting and the spread of humanity is quickly driving them closer to extinction. And Cambodia is no exception. In a country where the average annual income is equivalent to just 280 US dollars, the stakes for the poachers and smugglers are high indeed. The animal trade, with all its risks, is attractive. And Steve Galster, who works for conservation agency WildAid, says it's driving many species to extinction. The illegal wildlife trade is probably the number one threat to endangered rare animals today across the world, we think. Um, globally, the trade is estimated between about eight and 12 billion dollars a year. But stopping the trade is not the only reason that's brought the wildlife conservation organizations flocking to Cambodia. It's this, the jungle. Pristine habitat that Cambodia still has and which its neighbors and many developed nations have long since destroyed. In this kind of virgin forest, animals can live and flourish. That's why so many conservation groups now put money into people as well as animals. Forest rangers, a growing force supported by non-government agencies, NGOs such as Australia's Free the Bears Fund and America's Wild Aid and many more. Free the Bears, Dave Ware says this support is crucial. Most of the rangers that are from the Ministry of Environment, there's very little funding comes from central government. So it's about enough for the guys to have a uniform once every 18 months, sit around the substations, if they have a substation, uh, and do very little patrolling. So our idea was to get the rangers into the forest, doing long distance patrolling, to find out where the violations are, collect data on the wildlife there, and what's going on inside the forest. Cambodia banned the export of forest timbers in 2001, but stopping the illegal loggers is not so easy. Likewise, all wildlife is protected in Cambodia, but with big bucks to be made, organized crime runs poaching gangs. And with vast areas of forest to patrol with limited resources, it's a continual battle against the odds. <laughs> 